We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin in Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving Eve. We are so glad that you have joined us uh, this evening or whenever it is that you happen to be worshiping as a family. If you're a visitor, a special welcome to you, and we invite you to join us each and every week for the ministry and worship that God has enabled in this community. We hope that this service will be another opportunity for us all to gather together and to give thanks to God for God's deep, bold, consequential, and radically grace-filled love. And now we continue our worship 
as we hear God's word read. Our first reading comes from the prophet Joel. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for your abundant rain, the early and late rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was younger, I never truly enjoyed coming to church. It was very monotonous task, you could say, for I didn't enjoy it. I'd rather be at home playing Wii or like playing outside and watching cartoons or something, something typical of a kid. You know, as I got older, I started seeing more value in it. And, uh, That value has led me to feel called to join the OIO back when I was in ninth grade. The OIO, for those who don't know, is the Lutheran Youth Organization. We are a group of leaders and we lead. Like, I wasn't able to go to it because I had prior commitments, but we do. We have two, three, no, three retreats. I wasn't able to go to the previous, the last one we had, which was free ride, for a bunch of for the middle schooler kids. The next one coming up in January is road trip, and that's for high schoolers like myself. And we lead other high schoolers through either in small groups, or I le- I personally lead through music during large group sessions, or during worship, which is very. It's a whole lot of fun, and I'm happy that I was called, or, yeah, I'm happy that I was called to join the OIO, because it truly does mean quite a bit, because I would, I've met some pretty amazing people I would not have met unless God called me to join the OIO, like he has done so.
A reading from 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your lifespan? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Strive first 
for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In the recent months, I have gone through some pretty tough spurts, but three surgeries later, here I am. Thanksgiving commemorates the family, friends, and all the things it is we are grateful for. Jesus, in this passage, also tells us to be thankful and to have faith in the righteousness of God. You see, I broke my hand three weeks after I came back from an extensive ankle injury. Sitting in the hotel bed that night, I asked myself one question, why? You see, Jesus says for us not to worry because God is there. Worrying, he says, does not add a single hour to our lifespan. Yet, we still worry. I, sitting in bed that night, worried. Looking back, after overcoming such tribulations, I have found a new thanks for the forces involved with my recovery. It is a thanks that I wish to express and share this day on this Thanksgiving. We have all been through something or another, whether it be physical, mental, or even a little bit of both. We have all been knocked down, and yet we have all gotten back up. So I ask you, did a man come to touch you, curing your blindness, or did a man lay his hand upon you to cure you of your leprosy? No. Because at the end of the day, things like that don't just happen. Rather, you have parents, friends, husbands, wives, children, that do their best to aid you in your recovery. And quite frankly, that sucks. If only we could be able to be saved by the touch of a hand, but it does not work that way. When something inside of you breaks, the existence of a benevolent God seems so impossible. You can believe that he is there to comfort you, but belief only gets you so far. Eventually, you have to push yourself off the ground and put one foot in front of another. Then, when you inevitably fall again, no glorious hand descends from the heavens to pull you to your feet. Rather, it is the hands of another human being. It is the hands of your son, daughter, husband, brother, wife, sister, and all those who lie in between. Be thankful for that, that amidst their own struggles and their own falls to the ground, that they were there to pick you up. Once again, Jesus says, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Jesus implies that God will clothe you and that you have little faith to believe he will not. Personally, I don't necessarily buy it because it seems that every single time in the past, God was not the one there. It was my mom, my dad, my sisters, my grandma, and all the people that I call family. God is not the one to clothe me, feed me, or alleviate me of my worry, because I believe the so-called kingdom of God and his righteousness is not a fancy golden palace in the sky. But it's the couch I play games on with my siblings. It's the car rides I take with my parents to and from school. And on this day, on this Thanksgiving day, it is the table where I share a meal with the ones in my life I am truly thankful for. I know most of you will give thanks this day to God, of which I completely understand and support. But the one thing I ask of you is to go out of your way, regardless of your faith, and cherish a moment grounded in thanks, not of God, but of the real life, physical people that were truly there to lend you a hand. The women and men that even when it was not easy, even when it felt like God was not there, they were. Thank you.
the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, whose giving knows no ending, you invite the whole world to your table of mercy. Hear us as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Join together by your Holy Spirit as the body of Christ in the world. Make us bold in our witness to your never failing love for all your children. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Supply all that your creation needs to flourish. Guide us to effectively manage your resources so that all can enjoy your bounty. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present during this season of thanksgiving. Heal the sick, comfort the grief stricken, love the lonely, and make whole all who suffer in any way, especially those we name aloud or silently in our hearts now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts to be cheerful givers, sharing abundantly with those around us in need. Bless the feeding ministry undertaken in this community, community that baskets of food might feed both body and soul. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide leaders to pursue justice and mercy as you would. Replace violence and oppression with peace and dignity. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with gratitude family and friends who died this year. Grant that their empty seats at our Thanksgiving celebrations might be filled with your promise that one day we will all sit at your feast together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your welcome is wider than we can imagine. Receive our prayers for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Amen. Now together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A couple of announcements for us this evening. First of all, as we gather together in this season of Thanksgiving, we do so with thankful hearts for your continued generosity throughout this year. We're also thankful for the way that God has continued to call and sustain us this year. We continue to do God's life-giving work as a community of faith. Our annual Christmas basket ministry, where we plan to feed 144 families at Christmas, and also our support of the Pangani Lutheran Children's Center in Nairobi, Kenya, is continuing. We are raising $20,000 to fund these two life-sustaining ministries. Please give as you are able to this special annual appeal. We also will be offering our Angel Tree Ministry again this year. Details about how you can participate as we gather gifts for women and children in the area can be found in our weekly emails. Beginning next Wednesday, December the 1st, we'll be gathering for worship at 7 o'clock p.m. for our Advent midweek service. That service will be live streamed and in person. Check our weekly emails for information. And for those who aren't on our email list, you can join that list. If you go to the Connect page off of our website, firstlutheranec.org. 
Our youth gathering to, uh, planning to gather and attend the 22, 2022 National Youth Gathering are holding their next fundraiser. It's a trivia night. It'll be on Sunday, December the 16th at 6 p.m. Details are included in our Flames Weekly Youth Newsletter. Now is the time to begin gathering your teams and making plans to participate. And you're invited to join us for worship each and every week. We meet for midday prayer at noon on Facebook Live, and then it's available for replay on our Facebook and uh, YouTube channels. We gather for prayer on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, unless we are observing a holiday. Um, we gather Wednesday evenings at 7, at 7 o'clock p.m. Again, this starting on December 1st will be um, in person and via the live stream for our Advent midweek worship. And then on Sunday mornings, we gather at 9.30, both in person and via the live stream. And so now it's time for us to remember God's generosity, for us to commit to being generous ourselves as we remember that God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. Let us give thanks for the word. Gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, rich in love, we bless your name and give you thanks. In our need, you make haste to help us. You plant us beside streams of your wisdom. Teach us in pastures greening with truth and guide us on the path of your promise. By your spirit, awaken our faith that feasting on your word, we may love you more fully and serve our neighbor more faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Beloved, God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and evermore. Amen. Led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>